The first thing I ever rendered was a recreation of Van Gogh's painting, Bedroom and Isles. It was 2006, my space was still wildly popular, and I still had some hair. I hardly touched 3D software for a decade after that, and I thought my first render was gone forever, until last week when I came across my old photo bucket page and I found this. By the way, photo bucket was like imager, but back in the olden days. Anyway, look at this thing, it's absolutely terrible. I even found this incredibly dated screenshot to go along with it. Windows XP, AOL browser, an ancient copy of 3DS Max, and an MSN chat window open with, I think, my ex-girlfriend? Anyway, I was just going to show you guys this render because I thought you'd get a kick out of it, but then I had a better idea. I should recreate my first ever render 14 years later. So this is how I did it. I started out in the usual manner, just blocking out some basic shapes. I don't have a secret method to get the proportions right at this stage, I just eyeball it. You can always make adjustments later if you feel that things are out of place. For the brush bristles, I created a simple circle, then I gave it a hair particle system. I enabled interpolated child particles, which would create additional particles for every real one that's emitted. Then I just duplicate the circle across the bottom of the brush. I could have used an array system for this, but I wanted the ability to make slight changes to each bunch of hairs, mostly just changing the position and rotation of each one. Later, I also deleted out any hairs that wouldn't be visible to the camera in the final render in order to keep performance high. Continuing on with the objects on the table, I started working on the basin and picture. I used proportional editing and a subdivision surface modifier to push and pull the cylinder until it was in roughly the right shape. I used checker deselect to grab every third vert on the top, then I pulled up and out in order to create a nice wavy effect. The handle on the picture was created by selecting a couple of faces and just extruding out. Here's a quick tip. If you hold down the control button and click anywhere in the viewport with faces selected, Blender will extrude those faces out wherever you click. I put the gradient node through a colour ramp to create the texture of the ceramic picture. I also added some subsurface scattering to the material, but I did actually end up removing this later on. To make the cheese, I just altered the shape of the cube until it was in roughly the shape of a slice of cheese. Then I used the boolean modifier to cut some spheres into the mesh. I used the remesh and did some quick cleanup in sculpt mode. The holes in the cheese were, to be honest, a bit of overkill. I wasn't even sure if they'd be visible in the final render. The final table assets looked like this, and I was pretty pleased with them. I've already covered how to create glasses full of liquid in other videos, so I won't rehash that same thing again. I did change that blue glass in the background to be clear in the final render, which honestly was a mistake in hindsight because I think it looks pretty good. The table and a lot of the other assets in this scene I textured using Substance Painter. I used to use Substance a lot but I haven't really touched it much for the last year. I used the same image textures from Substance Painter on the mirror and the brush and several other assets in the scene. I'm a big believer in reusing image textures where possible. Not only does it save you from having to recreate the same basic image textures over and over again like wood but it improves the overall performance and reduces render times of Blender since you don't have to load in multiple different images. Just make sure you don't accidentally save over your images when you're exporting from Substance Painter like I did. Half my materials got messed up for a while and I had to recreate the table texture in order to fix all the other textures in the scene. The end of the bed was just a plane. I added a few loop cuts to it and then beveled them so each cut would now have three separate loop cuts. I selected the middle edge loop of each column and then I pulled them slightly back in order to make them look like planks of wood. The rest of the bed was just made from cubes. I used a bit of proportional editing and a few bevels and key spots to get some nice curves. For the bed sheet, I switched over to the alpha build of Blender 2.83 so I could take advantage of the new sculpting brush. If you haven't seen this cloth brush before, it's basically a cloth simulator that works inside the sculpting tools. It's really powerful and you can get fast, realistic results without running endless cloth simulations. For the pillow, I created a plane, scaled it to be the correct dimensions and added 50 subdivisions. I extruded it up slightly and then recalculated the normals. Then I added a cloth simulation and I enabled the pressure feature. 
This is a new feature that allows Blender to take into account internal pressure when you're running a cloth simulation. It means you can do inflatable things like balloons. I hit the play button, watch the pillow come to life, and then I use the new sculpting brush again to add in some wrinkles and fine details. In my render from 2006, I used a wood texture on the floor because that's how it looked to me on the painting. But my man Vincent created this other painting and you can actually say that the floor is made up of terracotta tiles. I found a really good tile image from textures.com and I changed the scaling and the rotation so that it would match the painting. This image set came with a height map so I connected the image to the mapping data then I plugged the height map into the displacement input of the shader. In the materials tab I enabled displacement and bump as an option in the actual settings of the material. This turns on micro displacement. Micro displacements are a kind of displacement that only takes effect in the final render. You can't see it normally in the viewport. I was going to take a really high level of subdivision for the floor to look good, which would have killed my poor old PC. Rather than making a floor with a million polys, I enabled the experimental features in the render tab. This gave me access to the adaptive subdivision settings. Adaptive subdiv will divide the mesh depending on how close it is to the camera, giving you the best results and optimal performance. With a few loop cuts added to the plane, we ended up with a nice, bumpy looking floor that didn't require my PC to have some sort of hard tack. I created a quick texture for the towel in Photoshop, then I imported that texture into Blender as a plane. I used weight painting to select just the corner of the mesh, and then I created that as a pin group in the cloth simulation. This way, the corner of the towel would stay in place while the simulation was running. Then I hit the play button, ran a few simulations until I found one that looked nice and I settled on that and applied the effect. I created a bump map for the towel threads and I plugged that into the bump node. I also used the same map to control the transmission value of the material so that some parts would be more see-through than others. I went back into weight painting mode, created a new vertex group then I painted out all of the parts of the towel that would be visible to the camera. I added a hair particle system to add some fibers to the towel. Then I used that new vertex group to control the density and hair distribution. This way, Blender would only add hairs to the towel where they'll actually be visible in the final render. Can we just take a second to appreciate how sexy this towel looked in the final render please? There's two different types of normal map, DirectX and OpenGL. For some reason, Substance Painted decided to export most of my normal maps in the wrong format, which made the any bits look like outy bits. You can see that the notches on the wood look like they're sticking out when they should be cut in. I added a separate XYZ node and a combined XYZ node, then I inverted the Y channel which fixed the normal map. I added some warping and distortion to the panes of glass using a basic noise node as the bump map. The windows were one of the weakest aspects of the final render to be honest. I'd have liked to have worked on them longer if I had time. For the door panels I used another awesome blender feature. I beveled the panels with loads of cuts. Then I created custom bevel profiles to add some design to the shape. I haven't heard many people talking about this feature but it's honestly one of the best time saving tools to come out of Blender 2.82. I used a quick and dirty hack on the paintings. I decreased the roughness slightly, then I fed the image texture into a bump node and the subsurface colour input. I used the same technique on every painting and they all came out looking surprisingly good. For the lighting, I just cranked up the HDRI image so it would be really bright, then I used a strong sun lamp aimed directly at the window. I also added a few lights in the interior of the scene just to create some fill lighting. To save on render times, I created an area light and enabled the light portal setting. A light portal basically directs Blender where the light should be entering your scene. You align them to windows, open doors, anywhere where light's going to come into the scene so Blender knows not to waste resources lighting up parts that are going to be outside. The chairs were made with simple modelling techniques, there's nothing special to say about those, but when it came to the UV unwrapping however, I was careful to select seams that wouldn't be visible to the camera. You can see I'm trying to pick loop cuts that are either facing the floor directly or facing away from the camera. Luckily both chairs in the painting are facing in basically the same direction so I didn't have to worry too much about visible seams. I used the text tools add-on to quickly add a checker map texture to the mesh. 
As long as all the squares were about the same size and there was no visible seams, I was happy with the unwrap. For the seat of the chair, I added some loop cuts to the cube and then I used the sculpting tools just to soften up the edges. I also used the new elastic deform brush to add a bit of a sag to the middle of the seat. The seat texture was another rough and ready solution that I would have liked to have spent more time on if I had the chance. I used a wicker seat texture I just got off the internet. I rescaled it in Photoshop. Then I used that image texture to drive a bump map and drive some micro displacements. Like the floor, I used adaptive subdivision to control the level of detail on the seat. Now with everything finished, I used about 1200 samples and hit the render button. That gave me a result that looks something like this. Not bad, but it can be improved. I used the glare node in the compositing tab to dim the whole image and add some lens glare to the hot spots. That looked pretty good, but I felt like the windows were too dark. I rendered a pass of just the windows with the HDRI brightness cranked up. Then I composited that over the first render in Photoshop. So just as a reminder, this is the original painting. This is my first render from 2006. And here is my new version. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Generally, I aim for realism in my renders. But this time I decided to go for a bit more of a stylized look. I wanted it to look almost like the painting was coming to life rather than a recreation of how the scene would have actually looked in real life. As always you'll find links to everything I've mentioned in the description box below. You'll also find a link to my Patreon there where I'm going to be uploading a copy of this blend file. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and I'll catch you all next time.